Africa now has five players signed to English Premier League teams, with three already making an impact in the world's biggest league. We chat to under-23 coach David Nodwani now about their careers and how it will benefit the country. He joins us live from Pretoria. A very good morning to you, coach. Thank you for your time. I mean, for, for the longest time, we saw a bit of a slump in the number of our players playing, uh, applying their trade overseas. We're seeing an improvement now, particularly in the EPL. What is it saying about the quality that South Africa is producing? Uh, good morning, uh, Nandi. Thanks for the opportunity and good morning to the viewers. Of course, it's a welcome uh, move in the right direction when we see uh, some of uh, our young South African players doing uh, very well in their various countries. Uh, the EPL, of course, as you stated, uh, the, the emergence of, of, of the naturalized South African players, you know, uh, uh, they are South African by heritage or by birth. Uh, uh, it's a step also that will enhance the talent pool that we have available for our junior teams and Bafana Bafana. So it goes a long way towards helping uh, our national teams in the future. And speaking about our national teams, Coach, I want to talk about someone like uh, Kaohelo Chauke. Uh, we've seen him playing for Southampton. I know that he left South Africa as an infant, and this makes it a bit tricky because he is eligible to play for both South Africa and England. Have you been communicating with him, particularly with the Olympics coming up? Yeah, look, we've been in touch with uh, Kaohelo. We've been alerted about him already after we qualified for uh, 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 the Olympics via AFCON. And uh, we followed his progress like many others. And uh, of course, you know, we're monitoring where can he come in and add value. But I must say as well that we have to be cautious because, uh, you know, playing in the reserves leagues mm. overseas abroad, we have to draw a comparison because the importance of uh, international experience at junior level is very important. Of course, he's indicated a, a high level of desire to want to represent his country of birth. And uh, we are excited about that when we are continuing to engage uh, 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 with him and his team. Uh, but of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that he'll be, you know, given a, a, a good meal on the platter. He has to prove that he's worthy of coming in the team because there's others that have worked hard to make sure that South Africa qualified for the Olympics. Yeah, and then uh, another name that comes to mind is Kanele Shabela. We saw him making his debut for Leicester City. Have you communicated with him at all? Yeah, look, Kanya, we had Kanya in our uh, qualification game against uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, we brought him in. Also, we had him in the under-20. And uh, 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 what we see, Nandi, which I think Coach Nzegi touched on, uh, mm. is very, very important point of um, the emotional connection of the players, you know, uh, inside the camp, inside the team. Because now you have two uh, uh, groups of players, the ones that are growing up overseas, you know, would do things the overseas way, whichever country they are in. And, you know, South Africans have our own way of doing things, also from styles of football. So we have to be careful that we are dealing with young athletes here, young players, and we have to take care of their emotional needs and make sure that their talent then can be enhanced. So the connection, you know, between uh, the, the, the players that are, are, are growing up in South Africa and those growing overseas becomes then a very, very important ste step because football, after all, is a team sport. So... Uh, it's a task that is before us that uh, we're navigating and negotiating and we're finding ways to make sure that within our SAFA programs, uh, we make it easier for these players to integrate with their local group. And, and that's what I wanted to touch on next. And I just want to pick up from what you just said. I mean, as I mentioned, these are players that um, left their home countries when they were one year old, two years old. It, it doesn't make it your job even more difficult when trying to convince them to come this side and play for the national team here. Because, Coach, it's all good and well to have these players playing overseas and doing well there, but it needs to show itself in our national teams. Yeah, look, uh, naturally we go with the ones that show the commitment, desire, and willingness uh, to want to represent South Africa. Uh, but what you also have to be cautious of mm. is uh, usually this, this names pop up, Nandi, after the team has qualified, which is a huge problem for us. Of course, we are working behind the scenes. There are other outside sources that are helping us, you know, to source this talent at the younger age so they can come in already from the under-17. Now, what happens is, uh, you know, yeah, then we have players that are also in between. You know, I can maybe give an example of a case of a Nicola Tavares, mm. who up to now we've been trying to work closely with him to try to secure his paperwork for South Africa. 
And at the time, you know, Coach Stewart wanted to bring him into Bafana Bafana. He was very eager. And uh, suddenly now, you know, we're running up and down with the agent, with him, to try to ensure that he still has the same commitment and desire to represent South Africa. So it's a double-edged sword, yeah. you know. So we go with ones that show willingness, commitment, and we'll offer them the opportunities to see how far they are in terms of their development compared to uh, our local boys. And, you know, the sad reality is we have players like uh, Ngobo, uh, Maduna, you know, we have evidence Makopa, who are young players within our PSL that are doing very, very well. And we also need to give them the same celebration because I think that uh, it shows that uh, the clubs locally as well are doing very well in exposing these young players to higher level competition. Now, we have to make a decision and say, here's a guy playing reserve league in England, in Portugal, or Division Two, Division Three, vis-a-vis -vis an evidence Makopa, who's playing regularly in South Africa at the PSL at a competitive level. You know, and those are the decisions that are uh, for us to make. So we really need to tread carefully yeah. on this one and not just celebrate a player being in the EPL, in Portugal, in France, just because they are there in France. Sometimes the level of competition in South Africa, in some of the leagues, you find that we see from uh, uh, previous experiences that our boys are holding their own, if not better, against some of the players. Absolutely, Coach. And just very quickly, we are running out of time. The Olympics are less than five months away. How are preparations going there? Yeah, look, so far, so good. Uh, we're just, you know, running behind the scenes, rallying behind the scenes to ensure that we get uh, games going. I think the second wave of uh, COVID has caught up with everyone, you know, that, that is trying to prepare for the Olympics. So we had a few countries pulling out because of our South African situation. So, but uh, we will make an announcement, uh, hopefully, uh, within the next 24 hours. Uh, hopefully we get a camp going now in the March FIFA week, but it's a tough situation to face with this COVID second wave. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Coach. We will leave it there. That was under 23 Coach David Nodwani speaking to us from Pretoria. And that